European reality? It makes no sense. It's going through a bad period and it must get out of it. It is a country of dynamic. It's fearful. This is the sharp and uncompromising focus on the EU today. Europe's leading political, cultural and media figures gathered here at Beaux-Arts Brussels at a conference organized by the French magazine Le Nouvel Observateur. Europe is at a crossroads, they say, but here are some clues on how to solve its problems. Seven months from the European elections, debates focused on the effects of free market liberalism, the ongoing quest for growth the rise of populism and the role of culture. For the editor-in-chief of Le Nouvel Observateur, the EU club of 28 countries is too bureaucratic. If there is one person who embodied the Europe that we know well, it's Jacques Delors. People were either for or against that kind of Europe, but we knew who stood for it. Since then, national governments have shied away from appointing someone too high profile. They want a minion who won't overshadow them, their powers or their visibility. So people feel it's not democratic. Today there's a president of the European Commission and the European Council. Is it reasonable to have two people in the role of an important negotiator, as the one played by Mr Van Rompuy, who's an important figure? In fact, we have an elected president of the Commission, but we've done it by half. Nevertheless, MEPs argue allowing voters to have their say on the next Commission president will boost turnout in May. Not necessarily, says columnist Bernard Guetta. So how then do we whet people's appetites for Europe once again? We could work together on the question of social dumping, on the environment, on the monetary policy of our competitors. Firstly, we need to show to people across Europe that as 28, or even as 17 inside the Eurozone, that we stand stronger together against the likes of China. The management of the Eurozone, banking union, that doesn't inspire anyone. On the other hand, if Europe gave schooling vouchers that all families could spend on language courses for their kids or on an Erasmus programme, that would bring the project back to life. The only thing is, however, is that opinion polls point to a rise in Eurosceptic sentiment. This is something that the EU needs to pay particular attention to, says one French philosopher. The old logic of Stalinist countries was that when there were problems in the Soviet Union, it was because the Soviet Union was not Soviet enough. Once it became more Soviet, there'd be no more problems. It's the same with Europe. When there are problems, it's because we need more Europe and need to be more European. To redefine what Europe stands for and save it from disintegration, we should remember what distinguishes it from the rest of the world, says Pascal Lamy, the former head of the WTO. The Europeans are less likely to tolerate inequality compared to elsewhere in the world, for example in the US and China. I think that the European identity is etched into our social systems. We just need an extra 1% growth. If we don't get that, those systems are at risk. And so I think that even our European identity is at risk as well. We have a much more human capitalism than America. Free education, free health care. Obama is called a communist because he wants to introduce just a little bit of public health care. Uh, we, we are a totally a privileged continent and we don't defend it. We don't defend our values, the values of enlightenment. After three days of debate, there was no miracle cure prescribed for Europe's problems. It can be said that progress in the EU won't be achieved just from idealizing about it.